Okay, with the concepts we have seen so far, let us design uh, a sample program. So, uh, the what we the problem that we want to solve is we want to write a program that reads the input line by line and counts how many lines has the user input. Program should terminate when the end of file character is encountered. Okay. So, we will try to solve this problem. Uh, by the way, the end of file uh, is a character which you can enter using control D uh, if you are running Linux. Okay. So, the flow chart at the very top level can be uh, envisioned as follows. So, we will just check uh, has the end of file been reached. If the end of file has not been reached, you read the next line. Uh, if it has been and check again. If the end of file has been reached, then you halt, otherwise you read another line. Okay. So, here is the very top level picture of what we want to do. So, this design is just meant to read the input line by line. So, it is a very vague flow chart, but at the top level this is what we want to do. So, let us say uh, more details about how we are going to accomplish this. In particular, we want to uh, see how we can read input line by line. Okay. So, here is the top level design and now we are going to essentially expand this box. We want to say how do we read the next line. So, let us design uh, the read next line box. So, the read next, next line box first you read a character and then you check whether the character read is new line character. That means, that the user has pressed an enter. So, the line is end uh, entered at that point or the user can enter a bunch of characters and instead of pressing enter press control D. Okay. So, the user can enter end of file. If either of these are true then the line has ended. So, you halt. Otherwise, if the character is neither new line nor end of file then you read the next character. Okay. So, here is the design for the function to read the next character, uh, next line. Okay. So, you read character by character, after every character you check whether a new line or an end of file has been encountered. If either of them happen, then the end line has ended, otherwise you go back and read another character. Okay. So, let us start by writing the top level function. Okay. So, let us translate the top level function into code. So, here um, we will introduce a new concept called what is known as a forward declaration. Okay. So, when you define a function, you can either give the logic the full function body when you define the function or you can just say that uh, here is what the function will look like, here is the type signature basically it is taking no arguments and it will return an integer value. And I will terminate that statement by using a semicolon which says that this function I will currently just say th the type of the function, I will define the function later. Okay. This is done so that uh, we can write a function which uses this particular function. So, when we write a function which uses that function, the type of the function should be known. For that we can just declare the type of the function, this is what is known as a declaration of a function. Okay. Unless you define the function, you cannot use it, but in order for another function to just see what the function looks like. De declaration is sufficient. Okay. So, let us design the top level function. So, we declare this uh, function that we will use in this function that we are about to write. So, this user function will be uh, called read all lines. Okay. Now, in that we will keep a line count initialized to 0 and then I will keep a flag called each line. Now, what this will do is 
we have to check for whether an end of file has been reached or not. For that I will use the function f e o f s t d i n. Okay. We will see that in a minute. While the end of file has not been encountered, you say that uh, read next line. Read next line will uh, return a 1 if uh, a line has been encountered, otherwise it will return a 0. Okay. So, line count will be incremented by 1 if I read another line, otherwise it will remain as it is. Finally, you return the number of lines read. So, this is a realization of the flow chart on the left. Now, there are a couple of things that uh, require explanation. First is that even though the read next line function has not yet been defined, just based on the declaration I can say that it is going to return an integer and I can use the integer here. The other thing is what do we mean by f e o f s t d i n. Okay. So, what do we mean by uh, the function f e o f. So, f e o f s t d i n is a function that is part of the s t d i o library. We have already used other functions from that library for example, printf and scanf. Now, the f e o f function what it does is it returns a function, it returns a value 1 if the end of file has been encountered in the input argument. So, s t d i n means that I am using the standard input which is the keyboard input. So, if an end of file has been entered via the keyboard, then f e o f s t d i n will return 1. Okay. So, s t d i n is usually the keyboard input and if usually if the user enters the control d character, then f e o f will say 1, because end of file has been entered. Now, let us design the function to read a line. Okay. We earlier wrote a function which assumed that there is a function which will read the next line and based on that I will keep on reading lines until uh, the end of file is encountered. So, we are now about to write the bottom function. So, we want to read uh, a line. So, we have already drawn the flow chart for that. Now, let us try to make it into code. So, we have to define a few variables. Uh, we will have int c h for reading a character. We will come to that in a minute. Then we will keep a count of how many characters have been read. And let us write the basic loop. So, we will just write the loop corresponding to the flow chart c h will be get char. So, get the next character and while c h is while the red character is neither end of file nor new line, you should keep reading characters. So, if neither of these is true, then you should read the next character, which is what the flow chart says. A slight uh, a small point here okay, is that um, get char returns an integer. Okay. This is uh, a technicality, because end of file is negative 1. ASCII characters if you remember go from 0 until 127 or something like that, um, whereas end of file is defined to be minus 1. So, because of this minus 1, uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot keep the return value of get char as a character, it technically has to be an integer. So, this is a technicality. So, uh, keep that in mind. Now, we need to do something further in the loop. So, we will complete this in a minute. Okay. So, what should we do inside the loop? Okay, this should be character. Okay. So, what is this function supposed to do overall? We have to return a 1 if the number of characters in the current line uh, that we have read is at least 1. So, if the current line contains at least a character, then we have to return 1. For example, if the user just entered uh, a new line, which is just press the enter key, then it is a blank line. Okay. 
uh, in that case we we won't say that we have read a line okay because it was a blank line so if there is at least one character which is neither new line nor end of file in that line we have to return a one otherwise let's say we return a zero okay so one way to do that is to keep a count of the number of characters we have read okay so for every character read we'll keep a count of every character which is neither end of file nor um, a new line we'll keep a count of characters okay so notice the way that the, the loop has been written so if the first character is a new line it will not enter the loop hence count remains zero okay at the same time uh, the way the loop is written count will count exactly those characters which are neither new line nor end of file okay so now let's decide what should be the return value we have to return a 1 if the number of characters in the current line including new line is at least 1 so if count is greater than 0 we can return a 1 uh, if exactly 1 if the last character was end of file without re, uh, having any other characters then we return a 0 so how do we do that we can check whether at least a character has been read by just checking the value of count okay so if count is greater than 0 then at least one character has been entered otherwise for example uh, we can also say that if the user has just entered a blank line then then also uh, we can say that one more line has been entered okay so that is up to the way you want to do it you can also take the stance that maybe a blank line does not count as a line okay if that is the case then you do not have to do it but in this case let us just assume that if at least a character has been entered which is either a normal character on a new line we will say that return 1 if the only character entered in that line is end of file we will say that uh, there is no more new line okay so what we have to do is return count greater than 0 this tells you how many non new line non end of file characters have been entered so this should be at least uh, uh, at least 1 or there is exactly one character entered which is a new line okay so in either these cases we will return a 1 otherwise we will return a 0 okay so we can put these program together by concatenating all the code that we have written notice one thing that declare the function first we use the function here so here is a top level function which will use a read next line when uh, read all lines use uses read next line read next line has not been defined yet so you can go here after read all lines has been defined you can define read next line so here is the function here so this is function 1 this is function 2 and finally you have main read all lines does not need any forward declaration because when main uses read all lines it has already been defined that was not the case here when read all lines used read next line read next line was not defined yet that is why we needed a forward declaration in this uh, program you can reorder the code such that read next line code can be written before in which case you do not need the forward declaration but the concept of forward declaration is useful for later discussions okay so i've just introduced that